Yay, Facebook land. <laughs> I'm about to uh, teach a yoga class here for movement, climbing, and fitness with my assistant, Chitza. Uh, I logged on a little bit early to, to make sure that technologically everything was working. Uh, if some of my people are out there, please message me and let me know if this isn't working. Uh, I'm going to get started here in just a little bit. Yay, I see some of you popping up. Yay, you can hear me? Can you guys hear me uh, when I'm standing over here on my yoga mat? Oh good, perfect. Aw, oh, Aaron, two Aaron's, M, I see Tara. Yay, thanks for being here, you guys. I'll get started in just a couple of minutes. Oh, you're gonna be the best yoga assistant ever, Chitza. Just the best ever. <laughs> All right, so welcome. You guys, if you have access to something like a towel, a towel is going to be nice for your knees, for your back, if you want some cushion. I'm also a big fan of just using like a big water bottle. Uh, this can be a nice prop to use as like a block. So if you don't have a yoga mat or if you just want extra cushion, get like a little blanket or a towel and also snag a water bottle. Uh, quiet and far away. Thank you for letting me know. Let me see if I can scoot the camera up. That's why I wanted to log on early. Let's try this. Okay, let's see. What about if I'm talking to you from here? Uh, is this okay? Can you hear me from this spot or is it still quiet? I'm watching your responses to see if you're able to hear me. I saw Peter said, I'm quiet and far away. Uh, is it getting any better now? Somebody, uh, somebody shoot me a message and let me know. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm just going to keep talking. And, uh, and hopefully we're able to do this together. Oh good, I saw a thumbs up. Another thumbs up. Okay, so you're able to hear me, hopefully. Please interrupt me if you can't. Uh, once again, if you would like a little bit of cushion for your knees during this sequence, maybe grab like a little blanket or a towel. And in place of like typical props, maybe a water bottle to use. All right. Oh, good. All right. So Liz says that she can hear me. Good. Yeah, please shoot me a message at any time um, if you can't hear me. I turned up my volume a little bit and hopefully we'll be able to get some yoga going together. Hi, Bobby. <laughs> pop up at any time, but I do want to get us started. So some of you know that I just started a new job over at a children's hospital and I'm loving it, <laughs> but I really miss teaching you yoga so, so much. And before we get started with our yoga here on the Movement Climbing and Fitness uh, Facebook page, I would just like to share a little bit of an experience that I've been going through at the hospital. And that's that this is a new job to me and I'm working with these little kids and they're scared. They're uh, full of uh, snot and, <laughs> and throw up. And yes, I'll try and angle the camera a little bit more to see the mat in a minute. Um, and when I'm about to go into one of these kids' rooms at the hospital, I kind of check myself 
and I have this mindset at first of being, of course, like super concerned and a little bit nervous because it's a new job. But then I pause before I go into my patient's room and I make myself take a deep breath and I try to remember that that patient is going to be able to pick up on what's happening inside of my mind. And if I go in with a nervous energy, if I go in thinking thoughts of self-doubt, that that kiddo is going to pick up on it. So instead, I become aware of my thoughts and the quality of my thoughts. And I try my best to switch them to a place of just love and smiles and caring. And the kids pick up on that, I think, as we all do. So just a reminder today that what you think in here gets projected out into the world and you have the power to change what's going on in your brain at any time. And I think that's really important right now. So we're gonna get started here in our practice. Hopefully this gave you enough time to kind of get everything ready. Take a seat. I am going to take my legs wide. Let me know if you're able to see my yoga mat better this way. A few of you are commenting that you can't see me on my yoga mat. But weird, it's like this is live or something. That's the best I think I'm gonna be able to do. Okay, can you guys see me here? Please somebody give me a response. Okay, I got a thumbs up. Good, take a comfortable seat, any kind. We're gonna breathe a little bit before we move. Close your eyes. We're gonna do a three-part exhale breath. That means that through your nose, you're gonna take a deep inhale. And then as you exhale, it's gonna be through the mouth three times. So take a big breath in through the nose. Open the mouth and Big breath in through the nose. Open the mouth, three-part exhale. Keep going. Three more. Big breath in through the nose. Three part exhale. And then just breathing at your own pace. Be quiet for a moment, and we can just hold a little bit of space for each other. Bring your palms to touch at your heart. And may we remember that the quality of our thoughts shapes the way that we show up in the world. Gently bow your head to your heart. Lift your chin, blink your eyes open, release your palms, and come to the top of a push-up, plank pose. Just checking my messages to make sure you can hear me. Okay, thanks Molly.
All right, hopefully that helps. Top of your push-up, plank pose. Spread your fingers, shoulders over your wrists, toes pressing down and feet pressing out. Fingers as wide as you can and so active into the hands that you're clawing down into your fingertips. Notice that if you turn the eyes of your elbows towards the top of your mat, you can hug your shoulder blades onto your back body. Lift your head in line with your spine. Tuck the tail, draw the low ribs back once more and take a deep breath. Take another. Take one more. Bend your knees and reach your tailbone up to the sky. Start to sway the weight from right foot to left foot. Sway the weight from right foot to left foot. Reach through your tailbone, press down into your hands. Breathe. With a little bend in your knees, it's gonna be much easier for you to keep your spine long. So keep your knees bent for as long as you need. I like to sway my hips from side to side, bending and extending the legs. Take your feet wider than hips distance apart. Keep the knees bent, still reaching the tailbone high. And then swivel your heels to the left. Point your toes to the right. Hug your right hip back. Lift onto your right fingertips. Walk them forward. Feel a big stretch through your right side body. Bend and extend your legs. Breathe. Come through center, feet wide, knees bent. Pivot your heels to the right, toes to the left. Hug your left hip back. Come up onto your left fingertips, walk them forward. Feel a big stretch along your left side body. Bend and extend your legs. Breathe. Swivel your heels back through center, downward facing dog. Walk your feet to your hands and enjoy a forward fold. Uttanasana, Uttanasana. Checking messages to make sure you can hear me. In your forward fold, again, find a little pulsation. Bend into one knee, bend into the other. Breathe. In your forward fold, interlace your hands behind you at your sacrum. Hug your shoulder blades together, lift your arms up and over your head, bend your knees, sway the weight from right to left. You can choose at any moment how you show up in these shapes. You can show up with presence and with breath, with a smile on your face, or by wincing and resisting. Bend your knees, bend your knees quite a lot and take your hands to your thighs. Bend your knees, take your hands to your thighs. With your hands at your thighs, find a little sway from right foot to left foot. Feet nice and wide, sway from right to left until your feet feel nice and stable. With your knees bent, your feet wide, Press your feet down firmly into the floor and make like you can rip the floor in half with your feet. Press the feet apart. Keep that strength in your legs and draw your low ribs back. Once you've drawn your low ribs back, cactus your arms out to the sides. With your arms cactus to the sides and your knees bent, lift your heels off the floor. Lift up through your heart space. Root down into the balls of your feet. Hug your right hip back, spread your fingers, and then twist your ribcage to the side, to the left. And if I'm mirroring you, then that means it would be going this direction. Come back through center. Take a deep breath. Hug your right hip back and turn to the left. Hug 
your left hip back and turn to the right. Come through center, still on the tips of your toes. Let your heels come to the floor. Take your hands to your thighs, bend your knees, and do a little sway from side to side. Deep breaths as you move. With feet still wide, knees bent, extend your arms. Extend your arms to the inside of your knees, almost like going into a squat pose or a little mini horse pose. With your arms connected to the inside of your knees, press out, but then use your adductors to squeeze back in. Draw the low ribs back. Once again, lift your heels off the floor. Hover. Breathe. Sway. Release your hands to the floor. Step back, downward facing dog. A little bend in the knees, reach your tailbone up through the sky. You can find a little sway from side to side. Root down through your palms, bring your big toes to touch, and inhale your right leg back, long and strong. Press through the ball of your right foot. Bend your left knee as much as you need if the back of your left hamstring feels taut. Lift your right leg as high as it will go. Open your hips to the right. Bend your right knee. Twist your dog. Lift your right knee as far away from your left as you can. Lift up onto your right fingertips. Slide them back like a little kickstand. Take your right knee out to the right like a dog would do at a fire hydrant. Make some big, slow hip opening circles. Change the direction of your circles. Plant your palms, extend your right leg back, take a deep breath. Set your right foot down to meet your left. Walk your feet to your hands, forward fold, Uttanasana. You can bend your knees as much as you need. You could rest your hands on your shins or clasp opposite elbow, opposite hand. Let the head be heavy, sway, breathe. Release your hands to the mat. Step back, step back, top of your plank. Push-up pose. Spread the fingers wide. Tuck the tailbone. Press the back of your heart through your shoulder blades. Make like you could rip the floor in half between your feet. Press them out. Do the same in your hands. Press the hands apart. And feel energy light up through your entire form. Take a deep breath. Exhale, send your shoulders past your fingertips. Come halfway down, Chaturanga. Press your heels back for the momentum to slide over the tops of your feet, hovering the thighs off the earth for upward dog, or thighs coming to the ground, and then bending the elbows slightly for cobra pose. Take a deep breath here. Lift your hips to the sky, downward facing dog. Take a deep breath. Sway. Root down powerfully into your hands. Bring your big toes to touch and inhale your left leg back long and strong. Lift your left leg as high as it'll go. Open your hips to the left. Bend your left knee. Twist your dog. Come up onto your left fingertips, slide them back like a little kickstand. You can always bend your standing leg as much as you need if this is too much on your right hamstring. Dog in a fire hydrant, your left knee out to the left. And make some big hip stimulating circles. Big long inhales. Huge exhales, change the direction of your circles.
Set your left foot down to meet your right foot. Plant into your palms. Tuck tailbone towards nose. Ripple forward through your spine. Come to the top of your push-up. Tuck the tail. Draw the low ribs back. Take a deep breath. Set your knees to the ground. And this is where, if you like to have cushion for your knees, you could bring your towel underneath them. With your knees set to the ground, rather than having your hips over your knees, walk your hands forward. Take your hips forward of your knees at a diagonal. So it's a modified push-up position. Make like there was something heavy on your heels. Lift them up and hug your heels into your glutes. Draw the low ribs back. Keep a hollow body plank position in the torso. Look forward. Bend the elbows, chaturanga, and come partly down. Straighten your arms. Top of a modified push-up. Don't let the belly sag. Do it again. Halfway down. Top of your push-up. For those of you wanting more challenge, you can take your knees off the ground. Halfway down. Top of your push-up. Halfway down. Top of your push-up. Halfway down. Press the heels back. Come over the feet. Upward dog. Send the hips back and high. Downward dog. Breathe. We have the opportunity to refine the quality of our thoughts at any moment. Just notice what your thoughts are right now. Walk your feet to your hands, forward fold. Soften the neck. You can have your hands at your shins or feet wide and completely melting. You could also use your water bottle anytime we're in a forward fold, placing your hands on the water bottle and using that for support. In your forward fold, interlace your hands the opposite way, the way you do it normally. Soften the knees, draw the belly back, shoulder blades together, soften the neck, lift your arms up and over your head, sway the weight from right foot to left foot. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. And breathe out. Breathe in. And breathe out. Release your hands. And once again, come to the top of your push-up. Plank pose. Tuck the tailbone, press the feet apart, press the hands apart, spread your fingers, take a deep breath. As you exhale, send your shoulders past your fingertips, come halfway down. Press the heels back to slide over the feet, upward facing dog. Suck your toes towards your wrists, lift your hips high, downward dog, and take a deep breath. Bring your big toes to touch and inhale your right leg back, long and strong. Open your hips to the right, lift your right leg high, bend your right knee, twist your dog. Slide your right hand back like a little kickstand, big hip opening circles. Bend your left knee as much as you need. Here's a little challenge. Dog in a fire hydrant your right knee, bend your left knee. Press the knees apart. See if you can play with like taking your right hand off the ground for a few moments and just seeing if you can catch your balance. Maybe the right hand stays lifted as you step the right foot to the top of your mat. Frame your foot with your hands and then lengthen your front leg to the degree that you can. And that might just be unbending it a little bit for some of us. Some of us might be able to straighten that front leg fully, hug the right hip back. Melt, if it's accessible to you, your heart through your toes. Take a deep breath. Bend back into your right knee, 
Sweep your heart and gaze forward, low lunge, strengthen the left leg. And do it again. Straighten the front leg, melt your heart. Bend the front knee, sweep your heart and gaze forward. Pulse between these two shapes, lengthening and bending your front leg. Make sure your left leg stays powered up the whole time you move and pulse between your lunge and your pyramid variation. Low lunge, bend into the right knee. Prop up onto just your peace fingers on either side of your right foot. Hug your right hip back and squeeze your inner thighs to the medial line. And now extend your right arm by your ear to hover. Extend your left arm by your ear to hover. Soften the gaze, reach through the tips of your ears, press through the ball of your left foot and take a deep breath. Pivot your back heel down, open up to the right, Vira Vajrasana too, and I'm just gonna turn so I can face you. So you're still bending into the right knee. You're expanding your arms wide, warrior two. If you look at your left toes, they're pointed towards the left side of your mat. Your right toes are pointed straight forward. Extend the arms, bend into the front knee, but then don't lock out your back knee. Soften the back knee, and now press your feet apart like you were trying to rip your mat in half. Keep hugging your right knee open to the right, and then feel free to take your hands to your hips, bending your back knee deeply as well, and then also get low if it feels good, and find a little sway from side to side. Warrior two is so much about the hips, so I find taking a little bit of pulse while I'm in my warrior two can feel really good. Take a few breaths here, move into your hips with your warrior two stance. Come back into your full warrior two, bending into your right knee, gaze over the right arm. Take a deep breath. Exhale, right forearm comes to right thigh. Extend your left arm forward and then over your left ear. As you reach your left arm over your ear, rotate your rib cage and gaze to the sky. If you're feeling more open here, or more advanced in your practice, your right hand can come down to the inside of your right leg or to your water bottle. Reach through your left arm, twist your heart to the sky, take a deep breath. Keep your left arm over your ear, gaze over your front toes, soften your back knee, extend your right arm by your ear, hover. Sweep your hands to the floor on the inside of your right foot. Turn all 10 toes forward for a wide stance forward fold. Parallel your feet, press your feet down and out, melt your heart, your third eye to the floor. You can always have your hands on your knees here or on top of your water bottle. A bend in the knees is totally fine. Lengthen to the degree that works for you, but do keep your legs super active. Press them down, press them out. Notice that when your feet and legs are active, you can feel the musculature of your legs and your glutes lighting up. And this allows you to spiral your inner thighs back and wide. Take a few breaths here. Lift up halfway. Walk your hands forward to the top of your space, plank pose. Tuck the tailbone, draw the lower ribs back, head in line with your spine. Fingers spread, shoulders past your fingertips. Use your knees if you need, like you did in our modified push-ups. Come halfway down. Press the heels back for the momentum to slide over the toes, upward facing dog. A little bend in the elbows, draw the shoulders back. Lift through your heart, less from your chin. Suck your toes towards your wrists, lift your hips high, downward dog, breathe. Keep breathing in your downward dog, just checking out the screen to make sure no one's telling me that they can't hear me. 
Looks like you guys are still with me. Excellent. Keep breathing in your downward dog, enjoying your space here. The space to be able to move, to practice with each other in this unique format. Bring your big toes to touch and inhale your left leg back long and strong. Bend your left knee, twist your dog. Spread your toes, spread your fingers. I'm just moving around so you guys can see me better. You don't need to move. Take your left knee out to the left, dog at a fire hydrant style. Come up onto your left fingertips. Bend both of your knees, press your knees apart, look forward. See if you can play with floating your left hand off the ground a little bit. Maybe it has to come back down, maybe you fall over, but just play with it, challenge yourself a little, and just kind of notice the quality of your thoughts as you're playing with this. Maybe the left hand stays off the ground as you step to the top of your mat. Find a low lunge. Frame your left foot with your hands, with your fingertips. Power up your right leg. Lengthen towards straight your left leg. Hug your left hip back. Lengthen the leg to your degree. It might still have a little bend in it but lengthen to your degree and then melt your heart down through your toes. Take a deep breath. Take another. Take one more. On the exhale, bend into your left knee, gaze forward, power up the right leg. Lengthen towards straight again, left leg, melt your heart. Bend into the left knee, look forward, low lunge, and now pulse between these two shapes. Lengthen and lunge, and lengthen, and lunge. Try to link up this lengthen and lunge to your inhale and exhale. Bend into your left knee, look forward. Prop up on just the, the tips of your peace fingers and then really focus on hugging your left hip back. Extend your left arm by your ear, extend your right arm by your ear and hover. Strengthen the hips, hug the legs to the midline, breathe. Pivot your back heel down, open up to the side, warrior two. I'm just going to switch so you can see me. You're bending into your left knee. You guys, look down at your left toes. They should be pointed straight forward. Your right toes should be pointed towards the long edge of your mat. Now, notice your hips here. You want them level. Sometimes we do funny stuff by lifting up our back hip. So you want the hips level as you bend into your left knee. Expand the arms and then soften your gaze over your left arm. We have another precious opportunity to just kind of reformulate and notice the quality of your thoughts. Practice it as much as possible. And then when you really need the quality of your thoughts to count, it's like way more accessible. Breathe. Bend your back knee. Try to take your hands to your knees and either stay lifted here, still with warrior two feet, or you can get down a little bit lower and kind of sway from side to side. And again, just really reap the benefits of this hip opening posture. Come back up, full expression warrior two. Breathe in, exhale, take your left forearm to your left thigh, swivel your right arm in front of your nose and then over your ear. As you reach your right arm over your ear, twist your heart space to the sky. Parsvakanasana. Reach through right pinky finger. Legs are powerful. Left knee urges to the left, heart to the ceiling. Gaze over your left toes, soften the back knee, press the feet apart and hover your left arm by your left ear. Breathe. Take your hands down to the inside of your left foot. Turn all 10 toes to the long edge of your mat and enjoy Prazerita. Why it stands forward fold. Again, you can have your hands on your knees, you can have your hands on your water bottle, 
but do press your feet actively down and out. Breathe your inner thighs back and wide. Soften your neck. I really like to bend into one knee and bend into the other. I'm not moving my feet. I'm just swinging my hips from side to side slowly and bending into one knee, bending into the other. See if that does anything for your uh, adductors, for your hips, for your inner thighs. How are we doing, you guys? I hope that you are still practicing and can hear me. From your wide stance, forward fold, walk it to the top of your mat, top of your push-up, plank pose. Tuck your tailbone, press the back of your heart through your shoulders, take a deep breath. Exhale, send your shoulders past your fingertips and come halfway down. Press the heels back to slide over the tops of your feet. Upward facing dog. Send your hips back and high. Downward facing dog. Take a deep breath. Exhale out your mouth. Take a deep breath. Exhale out your mouth. Walk your feet in a little closer to your hands. Bend your knees and walk or take a little pounce to the top of your mat. Go ahead and come down to a seat. You can use your uh, towel or a blanket if you needed some cushion. I have a really bony <laughs> tailbone, so I like always need cushion. We're gonna be on our sits bones for a little bit and our sacrum, so if you want cushion, go ahead and snag that. Once you've found the appropriate amount of cushion for your sitting bones, take your feet to the floor, wrap your hands around the backs of your hamstring, hamstrings, and then I like to bring the inner edges of my feet to touch, to hug medially. For those of you who take class with me, this is our favorite part of class. I'm so glad that we get to do this together. <laughs> Go ahead and start to lean back. And then once you lean back far enough that your low belly kind of talks to you, then take your feet off the floor. Lift up through your heart, spread your toes, and take your arms off to the sides, Navasana, boat pose. Soften your jawline. Excellent place to practice what's happening in your mindset. Sounds all well and good to have this like super positive mindset when everything's all rainbows and happy times, but what about when things get kind of hard? Take a deep breath. As you exhale, take your hands to the floor under your shoulders. Extend your legs out. Bring your elbows to touch the floor and just the low back touches the earth. Hover. And then lift your knees back up to your heart. You can use the assistance of your hands and stay with that. Or you can take your arms out to the sides for extra challenge. Take a deep breath. As you exhale, expand out, bring your low back to touch the floor, hover. Ardha Navasana. Lift back up, knees to heart, spread your toes, try to soften everything that's happening in your face. Take a deep breath. Again, you can use your hands behind you for support. Expand out, Ardha Navasana, hover. Lift back up, Navasana. Extra challenge, hands off the floor. Take a deep breath. Exhale, Ardha Navasana, hover. Scoop the low belly, create a hollow body. Take a deep breath. Exhale, lift back up, Navasana. Breathe in. Exhale, Ardha. Extra challenge, look up, right arm by your ear, left arm by your ear, full hollow body hold. Take a deep breath. Lift back up, knees to heart, Navasana. Inhale here. Stay for the exhale. Take a deep breath. Exhale, Ardha Navasana. Stay low, lay down, bend your knees. Go ahead and roll out your ankles, open and close the knees. And then bring your shins parallel to the floor. Interlace your hands behind your head. Take your elbows in towards your nose and then lift your head and shoulders off the floor. 
Extend your left leg out 45 degrees and then twist to the right. Stay twisted to the right. Look up to the sky. Try to lift your right side body totally off the ground. Draw the knees back in. Look up to the ceiling. Breathe in. Exhale, right leg out. Twist to the left. Stay twisted to the left. Look up. Take your left side body totally off the floor. Inhale to center. Exhale, twist to the right. Left leg goes out. Stay twisted. Look up. Lift your right side body totally off the floor. Inhale to center. Knees bent. And then exhale, twist to the left. Right leg out, stay twisted. Lift your left side body off the floor. Inhale to center. Exhale, twist to the right. Right side body off the ground. Inhale to center, spread your toes. Right leg out, twist left. Left side body up. Inhale to center. Just 20 more times on each side. Twist to the right, right side body up. Now stay here, reach to the right side of your right leg. Spread your toes, breathe. Inhale to center. Exhale, twist to the left. Stay to the left. Lift your left side body up and then reach your arms to the left side of your left leg. Spread your toes, take a deep breath. Come back to center. Head back, legs up, arms up. Lift your head and shoulders up. Try to lift your tailbone up. Try to reach, reach, reach past the pinky side edges of your feet. Reach, 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 reach. Take another breath and then relax. Take your feet down. Take them wide. And just breathe. Windshield wiper your knees from side to side. Let's see, windshield wiper your knees from side to side. Go ahead and hug your knees into your chest and start to rock and roll up and down your spine. Now you can do something fancy here, like jump back to chaturanga or jump up into a handstand, or you can just like cross your ankles and step back to the top of a push-up. Go ahead and flow through chaturanga dandasana. Upward facing dog. And meeting in downward facing dog. Move the hips from side to side, pulse, and breathe. Walk your hands to your feet. Step your feet wide. Bend your knees, take your hands to your thighs. And do a little sway from side to side until your feet feel pretty good. Press down into your thighs, inhale your heart up to the ceiling, but now draw your low ribs back, bend the knees. Lift your heels off the ground, reach the arms to the sky. Take a hold of your left wrist and arch over to the right. Heels still lifted, strong in the legs. Breathe. Gaze under your left underarm, hug the left hip down. Come through center, heels still lifted. Take a hold of your right wrist, Arch over to the left, hug your right hip down. Breathe. Heels to the ground, stand up tall, inhale. Exhale, hands to heart. And just soften for a moment. Take a couple deep breaths. Again, you guys, take your feet wide, bend your knees, cup your thighs. But now, rather than keeping the hands cupped, go ahead and make little like mitten hands and take them to the outsides of your knees. Use your mitten hands to press in against your knees. Have the knees press back out as powerfully as you can. 
Press the knees out into your hands. I call this a reverse thigh master action. So press the knees out and you should feel the outsides of your legs and your glutes getting really, really strong. So press the knees out and then lift your heels up. Draw the low ribs back, take a deep breath. Exhale. Heels down, extend your arms. Take them to the inside of your legs. As you slide your arms down, bring your hips a little bit lower, take your elbows to the inside of your knees, bring your hands to your heart, squat pose. Press the knees open, but hug the legs back in, and your spine should be long here. A lot of the time when we do squat pose, people come in with this just like completely like kyphotic, overly rounded upper back, but the idea here is that we're strong in the legs, we're lifting our hips up, and we're reaching our heart space up through the ceiling. So take a few more breaths in your squat pose. Set your hands to your mat. Step back, step back. Top of your push-up, plank pose. Take a deep breath. Send your shoulders past your fingertips. Come halfway down. Press the heels back to slide over the feet. Upward facing dog. Set your hips high. Downward facing dog. And take a few breaths. Walk your hands to your feet or your feet to your hands. Bring your hands to your heart, stand tall, make your feet nice and stable. Bend your knees. Take your right ankle to the top of your left thigh and melt your heart. Figure four, Ekapada Utkatasana. Shoulder blades on your back, toes active, heart melting towards your ankle. You should hopefully feel um, a little feedback through your left hip here, maybe your glutes. Uh, the hips should be level and you can kind of reach back and feel your hips. If I was in class with you right now, I'd be walking around telling you to lift your left hip up. So just use your hands to kind of be your own teacher, you know, check yourself here. And a lot of the time we have a tendency to kind of dip over to the side, but we really want our hips to be square and level. Some of you might feel open enough to perhaps even like touch your shins to your um, forearms, your shin to your forearms. Some of you might feel comfortable enough to take your hands to the floor. Uh, others of you might play with a little arm balance here, maybe lifting your back foot off the ground. Some of us might just stay in our figure four. Cool thing about practicing at home is like, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> Press down into your right foot, stand up, and bring your left thigh parallel to the ground. With your left thigh, <laughs> your right foot, excuse me, parallel to the ground, Press your hands forward and extend your right leg back. Warrior three, hover. Bring your hands down to the earth. Standing splits. Notice that we don't want the hips open to the left. Again, just like we did in our figure four, the hips should be square. So you can take one of your hands back and kind of feel your hips to have them level. Your hands can be on your water bottle if the floor is too far away or in fingertips, but get really active in your back toes. Maybe play with melting your heart to your shin. If you want a challenge, take your hands to your shin and breathe. Take your hands down to the floor. If you can get your palms flat and your arms straight, go ahead and lift your right heel off the ground, bend your right knee, and give a little jump switch to your left foot. Do it again. This jump switch can be really, really small or it can start to get really, really big. You decide what's safe for you. Continue to jump switch in a way that feels good for you. Some of you might find your handstand here. Others of us just might breathe and enjoy standing splits. Take at least one or two more jump switches. to a forward fold. Just breathe. Grab opposite elbow off 
office in hand and notice your thoughts. hands to thighs, spine long, sway it from side to side. With your hands at your thighs, step the feet to a nice stable distance, stand up, touch the sky. Take your hands to your heart, bend your knees, and then opposite side. So I think that I had to start with right foot last time. I can't remember. <laughs> So go ahead and take your left ankle to the top of your right thigh. Yeah, take your left ankle to the top of your right thigh. And then notice again that on this side, the tendency is going to be that your right hip is going to want to dip. So reach back with your hands and literally feel your sacrum in your hips and make them level. Activate your toes, draw your low ribs back, bring your hands to your heart. Shoulder blades on your back. Some of you might play with melting your heart a little closer to your shin. And the reason I say some of you is because this is quite a big hip opener. And a lot of us don't have the flexibility in our right hip yet to let us come lower. So stay here if that feels like just the right edge of your flexibility. If you're more open, you might start to bring your forearms to touch your shin. And you can stay here, or those of you that are more advanced can start to play with your little arm balance, lifting your left foot, excuse me, right foot off the ground. It is like really hard to teach not being able to see your bodies. I really miss you guys. Root down into your standing foot and bring your left thigh parallel to the ground. Touch the sky. Take a deep breath. As you exhale, press your hands forward and extend your left leg back, warrior three. Take a deep breath. Exhale, fingertips to the floor. Bend your standing leg as much as you need. Again, tendency here is to want to open up the hips, close them down. Really suck your uh, right hip back and then practice melting your heart down through your toes. Keep lifting your left inner thigh to the sky. If you want more challenge, wrap your hands around your calf. Breathe. Keep your back toes active in the air. Hands to the floor. If your palms are flat and your arms are straight, lift your left heel up and give a little jump switch. Remember, these can be as big or as small as is safe for you. Just breathe. Go slow. Try to lead more with your inner thighs. Less by just rocket shipping your feet. When you have enough of that, come to a forward fold. Clasp opposite elbow with opposite hand and breathe. your hands up to your thighs, bend your knees, and find a little sway. Release your hands to the ground, and step your left foot back. Toe heel your right foot out wider to the right. Bring your left knee down to the ground, and you can place your blanket under your knee. With your hands on the inside of your right foot, left knee on the ground, walk your left hand out to the left and take your right knee to your right hand to your right knee. Draw the belly back, inhale your heart up to the sky, press into your right thigh and then twist, gaze over your right shoulder and breathe.
can stay exactly as you are, or you can reach your right arm back, bend your left knee, and clasp the pinky side edge of your foot. If the clasp of your foot is not possible, just stay extended in your right arm. If you're able to clasp the foot, see if you can back your glute up to the heel. Try and keep these close together and then lunge forward into your front knee. If you're feeling open enough here, you can bring your left forearm to the floor for Pravrita Ma. Twist to the right, lean back, long spine, breathe. Release the back foot, take your hands down to the inside of your right foot and lift your left knee off the ground. You can simply switch out the legs or for fun you can jump switch them. This time left foot will be forward, right knee is going to come down, you can cushion your right knee with your towel. Make sure that your left knee is about over your left ankle to your extent. And with your hands on the inside of your left foot, move your right hand out to the right. Take your left hand to your left thigh. Squeeze inner thighs, and then inhale your heart up to the ceiling. Press down into your left thigh, and then twist your rib cage to the left. Lean back, gaze over left shoulder. Breathe in. And breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. You can stay exactly as you are, or for more of a quad stretch, extend your left arm back. This might be enough, or optionally bend the right knee and clasp the foot. If you're able to get the foot, see if you can back your glute up to your heel. And try and keep those um, body parts, the heel, glute, and close proximity. As you lunge back into your left knee, if you're feeling really open, you can bring your right forearm down to the floor. Lean back, twist to the left, gaze up, maybe soften the gaze, and just breathe. Release the back foot if you had the clasp. Take your hands down to the inside of your left foot. Lift your right knee off the ground, lean forward, step your right foot to meet your right hand, bend your knees, squat pose. And if you were with me earlier, then you remember that we're not just like collapsing into this, we're making our spine long. Press the knees open, reach your heart to the sky, close your eyes, take a deep breath. Exhale out your mouth. Take a deep breath. Exhale out your mouth. Take one more breath in our hip opener. Then exhale, reach back, reach back. Come on down to your seat and escort yourself down onto the floor. Lay back. Draw your knees into your chest and find a little rock from side to side. Keep your right knee drawn in, extend and rest your left leg on the ground. If extending the left leg doesn't feel good, you can keep the left knee bent with left foot to the floor. Using your left hand at your right knee, supine twist. Extend your right arm out to the right, draw your right knee across the body, and gaze over your right arm to the right. Come through center, draw your left knee in to meet your right, and make a little rock from side to side. Keep your left knee drawn in, extend and rest your right leg on the ground. You can always bend your right knee and keep your right foot on the floor for this initial uh, section here, or you can draw the left knee down to the outer edge of the left rib cage with right leg straight. 
And then supine twist. Take the knee, left knee across the body. Extend left arm out left, gaze left. And then enjoy a few inhales and exhales. Come back through center. Draw the knees into the chest. You can stay just as you are or happy baby. The feet get expressed up to the sky. The knees are bent like a little dead bug. The arms go to the inside of the legs. We reach for the outer edges, the pinky side edges of our feet. We draw the knees down, the head relaxes back. And rather than letting, hi Chitza. Oh my, thank you Chitza. Rather than um, letting your tailbone lift off the ground, the tailbone comes down to the earth. Draw the knees down, feet expressed to the sky. Feels really nice to rock from side to side. I like to extend one leg and extend the other, or both at the same time. Release your happy baby. Send your legs out long. Relax your arms down at your sides. Lift the heart up to allow the shoulder blades to kind of glide down the back. Let your feet splay open to the sides. Let your palms be expressed out into the world as kind of a symbol of being just receptive to this moment in time. And then I'm gonna hold this space for you. So just, so just close your eyes and take five minutes, just five minutes to pause and breathe.
those of you who stayed with me during our Shavasana, first of all, I'm really proud of you. It's hard to just stop, especially when we're not holding each other in a, a community space that's not digital. But go ahead and start to bring a little movement into your toes and fingers. Let your chin go from shoulder to shoulder. Stretch your arms back, extend your legs long, breathe. Bend your knees, roll over to your right side. And come up gently to your seat. Once you find your most comfortable seat, sit up really, really tall, like embody this, this practice of, of mindfulness and somatic awareness. Broaden your shoulders and bring your palms to touch. I talk about this in class a lot that, you know, everything in this world can be thrown at us that there will always be curveballs, and we can't do anything about that necessarily. Like we can't control that those curveballs are gonna come at us, but what we can do is we can shift the way that this, the way that our mind uh, uh, chooses to perceive what's happening around us. And when we change what's happening inside of our mind, it's pretty flippin' cool because the world picks up on that and reacts to it and it becomes a better place when the energy in here is good uh, the energy that greets you out in the world is extra super good and I just really appreciate all of your energy being on this online format with me through movement climbing and fitness thank you so much for practicing um, message me if you had any questions and I love you hope to see you soon Namaste.